Are you looking to promote your business? Perhaps a video for your website? Or maybe just a story to tell? If so, then you are a name to know. I am your host, Alicia Figueres, and A Name to Know provides a stimulating 10-minute interview for your business. For more information, give us a look at anametoknow.com. Why? Because you are a name to know. Welcome to A Name to Know. I'm your host, Alicia Figueres. I have a very, very funny gentleman with me who is definitely a name to know, Robert Sividanis. Robert, welcome to A Name to Know. Thanks for having me. Good oh, to see you again. It's a pleasure having you. I love your energy. Um, I love the way we met. Um, you know, I work in the jail, and you came in as a comedian to give light to the inmates, and I was just so blown away because of the environment and how you were so effective with them. So, I don't think anybody else I know will be able to say later today they did an interview with a woman they met in jail. <laughs> this is true. This orange is true. Orange is the new black. <laughs> the <Long> island style. <laughs> yeah, we were true. there. I was there with uh, um, my business partner, Cara Am Amore, 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 a couple of weeks ago. And mm -hmm. um, Cara Amore and I started this company, Recover the Laughter. So we do recovery based comedy, we bring into alcohol and drug treatment facilities as well as correctional facilities. Okay. So we were over there in jail. Um, I was there by myself, actually, that day. And uh, it's interesting. It's very different doing it in a correctional facility. Was that your first time? No, no, I had done it before, once before. Uh -huh. And a uh, great group of guys, it, it's just a very different dynamic. The, the feel in the room is a little bit more intense Right. when they all sit down and, okay, here's Robert's going to give you guys some comedy. We're in jail. This guy's gonna make us laugh. Right. And uh, the block that we were in was a alcohol and drug related dart dart program mm -hmm. block. So they get what I'm talking about. Right. So a couple minutes in, it's fine. But it's you know I've never I've never been inside. I've never done any time. So I show up so excited and pumped to be able to perform for the for the inmates. Thing. Right. And then you get in, then they close. <laughs> the first door closes behind you. It's, yeah. What am I doing? It's quite an environment. I was kind of nervous in the beginning because I didn't, I wasn't sure if you were going to pull it off because you have a, a dynamic group in that room, different ethnic groups, language barriers, but you rocked it. You rocked oh, thank you, it. Thank you. It was fun. I mean, they're a very honest group. Yeah, very honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, you know, they're going to tell me what they think. You know what I found funny? The ex facial expression of the past, the priest that was in the room with us, he was like, Stoic for the whole for the entire presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also seen he's seen my act yeah. a few times. It's like anything else you can enjoy, but it's like you know, there's you know, a little bit new. I mean, I was able to comment on things that were going on in the room, like the rules that they had on the wall that night. Yeah, you know, don't walk around without your gel issued pants on. And I said, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Um, and I love doing it. You know, doing the rehabs and the detoxes are my favorite shows. I've Doing comedy 10 years now. Mm -hmm. We've been doing the Recover the Laughter shows for a, about five years now. My favorite shows. What got you started, Robert? Well, comedy was something I wanted to do since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, I had done acting for years and sketch comedy and all led up to me not having to depend on anybody else to show up for me to do stand-up was a big reason. And it was a dream. The recovery comedy. Now, I met Kara... We both got booked on a rehab show. We didn't know each other. And um, we saw each other's act, you know, and we became uh, friends immediately. And, you know, now we go in every Sunday, we go into a rehab on Long Island um, to do recovery comedy for the patients in the rehab. If there's a month with five Sundays, we have a rehab for that. We mm -hmm. go once every other month to a rehab on Staten Island to do the comedy. We have one out in. It's something that we do once every eight months because it's a long-term program and it's mostly service and it's it's fulfilling in a huge way. It's it's great stage time for a comedian because all these rooms have a, a nice number of people and they're going to be honest. People sitting in a rehab or a detox, detox is a tough room. Yeah, uh, They're going to let you know whether you're funny or not. Why, why is it fulfilling to you? Well, one of the big reasons is each month I get to go back to the rehab that I attended 
years ago, yeah. and also the, the detox floor in the hospital that I, that I attended years ago. I get to go back to where I started my recovery. I, I'm in recovery 22 years now. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. So it, it gives me a lot. They didn't have this when I was in rehab. They didn't have, you know, and I know it probably seems to sometimes to some of these patients like it's a, a spaceship landing. Mm -hmm. We walk into this room, we drop a mic stand and set up speakers. And what is this? You know, they're used to giving urine samples. Now we're going to be doing comedy for them. And uh, so it's a great feeling to be able to get in there and, and break up the day for them and kind of all together look at what we did, what we looked like, and how crazy it was when we were out there. Uh, and laugh at it. You know, the biggest thing for me is when we're done, we do a talk back to kind of shift everybody back into mm -hmm. where we are. And every time somebody says, you know, thank you, I haven't laughed in years, sometimes I'll say it's, it's that's a, huge. It's a feel good. Yeah, it is huge. It's huge. You know, and the, uh, the correctional facility, the same thing. I mean, they come over and uh, they want to thank us, mm. you know, when we're done and they let us know, you know, not a lot to smile about in here and uh, uh, we appreciate you coming in. And it also, it, there's a therapeutic value to it that if somebody's not in the room, you are in the room, mm -hmm. right? So it's, I'll contact people who run rehab facilities or, or whatever it is that we're looking to get into and uh, it's a very, very busy business. So it, it takes being in the room to really get the therapeutic value That's of it. That's right. If a counselor is sitting, and this happens often, a counselor will be sitting in the room as we're presenting our comedy, and someone that's sitting in the room as a patient was having a tough morning. They were going to leave maybe, whatever it is that they're upset. And the counselor gets to see the difference in their body language. They're not flush anymore. They're not angry and when they walk out. Even if it's for, even if it's for a little while. There's a, a real tangible therapeutic value. To it's it. worth it. You know, it makes uh, it all worth it. I've got to do it for 15 people sitting in a rehab room <clears throat> up to, you know, I did a, a rehab facility last year in Pennsylvania where there were 300 people in the room. Fantastic, wow. fantastic feeling. You know, and uh, again, as a comedian, it's a great workout. I get to work my act out mm. a lot doing these shows. You know, and you can kind of really push. People in rehab or jail, there's not much you can't really talk about. Right. So outside the correctional facility, where do you perform? I do clubs and, and private functions. And I had just gone to uh, somebody outside of uh, uh, Recover the Laughter had uh, booked me to replace somebody on a 12-step a, a convention this past weekend. So I was in Wisconsin. I flew to Wisconsin. Wow. And did it. But, you know, clubs, casinos, you know, I'll go next week. Um, next weekend, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, I'll be at uh, uh, Bananas. If you ask a comedian where they play, and they're going to give you their uh, roster. Uh, Hasbro Heights, Bananas and Hasbro Heights mm -hmm. Comedy Club. I love it. You know, it, it, it's getting out there and doing what you love and getting to work it out. It's always changing. You can always, or else... It's just boring, you know? so I always change up what I'm doing a little bit, uh, and I could take things that I do for the patients in these treatment facilities and bring it to a regular stage. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, um, but everybody kind of at least knows somebody if they haven't had a problem themselves with alcohol and drugs, and they kind of get what's going on, you know, so it's, I can bring what we do and recover the laughter into my regular comedy venues, you know, and uh, so primarily comedy clubs, casinos, sometimes firehouses. You do a, a private, you know, private gigs are interesting. It could be someone's living room. And you're earning your money. What's your favorite joke? My favorite, of mine? Yes. Uh, what's this show rated? Um, <laughs> the world is your oyster. The world is my oyster. <laughs> um, I don't know if I really have, there, there's so many that are like my children. I have so many. You know what I mean? I, I like to uh, start off the recovery shows with something that they all know mm -hmm. we're here to have fun. I'll tell them, you know, thanks for coming out. Uh, you can tell you guys are in a good mood. I'm in a good mood myself. I know I have a long way to go, but recently I dropped a little over 40 pounds. You know, and usually it is a reaction. I'll say, well, thank you. You know, I'm back on the cocaine. <laughs> and then I say, this would be a much different show if I was about to... <laughs> the hell are you all staring at? And then they know... 
what kind of time we're going to have spending together. Right. You know, uh, but it's it's so open. You're able to talk about uh, on stage uh, drugs, relationships, sex, uh, society, in a way that's very freeing on a stage with a microphone right. in your hand. You know, where it might cause friction sitting at a table with somebody at a party. Mm -hmm. You what, know, uh, what's been your favorite moment in comedy? Mm -hmm. There was a show years back when I was first starting to hit my groove. It takes quite a while to get good at it and get funny and be confident and find who you are on stage. Mm -hmm. There was a moment where I did a very large firehouse show. And when I finished my set, the response from the audience was so loud and in sync, it almost <laughs> literally almost knocked me back. Really? And I never forget that uh. because that's what it could feel like when it's a big thank you mm -hmm. for doing this. Uh, uh, and as a comedian, you you store those moments because it's good. there are nights where you're on stage and there are people just go, they're not buying it. They're right. looking at you and just say, no. That must no. be a horrible feeling inside. It, it can be. It can be. It's You, 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 you develop thick skin mm -hmm. in show business or you're not going to be able to stick around. That's right. And it's also uh, uh, always got to be partly me Something that night isn't going the way it normally does, but there's always going to be different dynamics going on where sometimes you'll get up on a show where nothing is set up the way it should be on a comedy show. It's outdoors. It's during the day. The sound system stinks. They're serving food during your set. Yeah. And sometimes those shows are horrible, and sometimes there's no science to this. It goes fantastic. So you don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I remember the first time I showed up at a <laughs> long time ago, a gig in... in uh, kind of down south, let's just say. And um, I introduced myself to the contact at the venue, and I said, hi, my name's Rob, and I'll be your MC tonight. We're going to give you guys a great show. And he looked at me a long time, and he said, that's good, thanks. Uh, could you tell me, uh, what's an MC? <laughs> so I had to explain to this guy that an MC is a host. So you do get to meet different kinds of people, too, yeah, doing this work. And I said, well, you know, it's just, I'll be up there at the microphone. He says, well, we got one of those. So... Rob, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Well, we're going to continue to try to find new venues to do the recovery comedy, obviously, mm -hmm. for Recover the Laughter. I uh, also am going to be shooting a film, a screenplay that I wrote with another friend of mine, a comedian named Tom D'Addario, called awesome. Pancakes and Syrup. Pancakes and, and Syrup? Yes, that's the name of the screenplay. And we'll okay. be shooting that in the summer. I'm also developing a, a show that I'm writing called Stages, which will be about artists and how they live their lives and the impact they have on others. So a few things going on. Cool beans. Well, I'm so happy that you're here with me today. I was. I feel very special. I'm really impressed with your work. Thank you. I wish you the best, especially with your upcoming screenplay. So Robert Sividanis, another name to know. See you.